What's up, guys, and welcome back to another savage episode of 40 Facts on the Warhammer Universe. This time, we're going to be focusing on a psychically enhanced Magnus the Red. So let's dive deep into this Primarch's origins. Magnus was the only Primarch who possessed a form of psychic communication with his father, even during gestation. He also remembered his origin, and he possesses tremendous psychic talent. After the chaotic powers took Magnus, he found himself on the remote colony world of Prospero, a world inhabited by psychers who could wield warp energy. Magnus quickly became a powerful psyker under the tutelage of Amon, and within only a few years of arriving on Prospero, he became the world's greatest sorcerer. After Magnus got rid of the Sai Shuin, psychic predator beasts who ravaged the countrysides and cities, he was named Leader of Prospero. As leader, he ordered his sorcerer cults to rebuild the planet into something of breathtaking beauty. Pyramids and towers composed of glass and marble were erected. The world was rebuilt into paradise. Inside these pyramids, Magnus compiled volumes upon volumes of knowledge and books. It was not long until the Emperor noticed Magnus's presence in the warp and went out to find him. When Magnus and the Emperor finally came face to face, they embraced and conversed as if the two'd have known each other for years. They engaged in decade-long joint travels and studies of the Immaterium, with the Emperor teaching Magnus of the dangers and dark entities of the warp. The Thousand Suns Legion had inherited Magnus's psychic talents, but their gene seed was genetically unstable, causing mutations such as mental instability and space marine organ rejection. Due to this, their legion was under strength and therefore wasn't allowed to join inside the Great Crusade. Magnus began to search for a cure, and after several decades, he was successful. The mutations were gone, but Magnus paid for this with his right eye. He was fooled by the chaos god Zeech into thinking that he had bested the powers of the warp. This ruse was so that Magnus could gain arrogance and thus delve deeper into studying more corrupt forms of sorcery. After 100 years, the Thousand Sons were finally able to join the Great Crusade, although the Emperor was wary of those with psychic abilities, other than Malkador the Sigilite, but the Thousand Sons' psychic abilities proved too good a weapon during the Crusade. The Thousand Sons preferred to use their psychic might rather than fight a full frontal assault. This caused some tension between Lehman Russ, Primarch of the Space Wolves, and Magnus. Lehman says that this tactic is dishonorable and cowardly. Magnus began to compile all the knowledge of the worlds he had conquered, and from this he created a powerful tome called the Book of Magnus. He eventually managed to transverse an Eldar webway by brute psychic force. Due to the feud between the Space Wolves and the Thousand Suns, other Primarchs began to voice their displeasure with the Thousand Suns Legion. The Death Guard, Imperial Fists, and Raven Guard all hated the fact that the Thousand Suns seemed to ravage worlds not for the Emperor, but for their own personal gain of knowledge. They wanted the Legion disbanded and expurged from all Imperial records. Hate and racism of psychers rose to incredibly high levels, and the Emperor had no choice but to call forth the Council of Nikea. Here, Magnus pleaded his case, showcasing how psychic abilities have positive opportunities for humanity. Lehman Russ and Mortarian of the Death Guard argued about this. Mortarian had experienced the atrocities caused by psychers firsthand on Barbarus, and after much delegation, the Emperor had come to a decision. He ordered the use of psychic abilities banned, except for astropaths, navigators, and a very strict, sanctioned and controlled psyker, who was authorized to carry out imperial business. Magnus and the Thousand Suns were banned from sorcery, and a new position was created within the Space Marine Legions, the Chaplain. He was there to uphold Imperial truth 
and help maintain the Legion's dedication to the Emperor's commands. While meditating on Prospero, Magnus foresaw Horus become corrupted by chaos. Betraying the Emperor and the Imperium, fighting a costly civil war. The only fate the vision did not reveal Magnus was his own. Magnus quickly attempted to contact Horus psychically, but he was too late. Horus had already been wounded by the demon blade Kinbranch, Anathame. In despair, Magnus then gathered his legion's best sorcerers and attempted to psychically contact the Emperor to warn him of the betrayal and civil war to come. Although this was outlawed by the Emperor, Magnus couldn't wait to use the slower but legal telepathy to warn him. Using an astral projection spell, Magnus raced through the warp until he came upon a webway that led to Terra, but was protected by an impenetrable barrier. Magnus tried and tried but could not make his way through. Then he heard a voice whispering to him that he could provide Magnus with the power strong enough to let him break this barrier. With no other choice, Magnus had accepted the offer, and finally he burst into the Emperor's throne room. Magnus's entry diminished the psychic wards that the Emperor had placed around the Imperial Palace, thus allowing warp entities to launch a psychic assault on Terra. Thousands of the Mechanicus adepts died, and with their deaths, the Emperor's work was undone. His webway portal project was compromised. Horrified, Magnus returned to his physical body, while in shock of his actions' consequences, he received a vision from Zeech, telling him that his own destiny lies within the will of chaos. The Emperor was furious at Magnus for destroying his century-long attempt at creating a safe webway. He was disappointed that his child disobeyed the rulings of the Council, and he did not believe that his beloved son, Horus, would betray him. He ordered Lehman Russ to bring Magnus to Terra to face judgment for his actions. While on the way to Prospero, Lehman Russ was contacted by Horus. Horus ordered Russ to destroy the Thousand Suns Legion, and since Horus was appointed War Master, he held the authority of that to the Emperor, so Russ could not refuse. The Space Wolves were then accompanied by the anti psyker Force, the Sisters of Silence, and millions of Imperial Army troops. Magnus realized that he had been used by Zeech, and to atone for his actions, Magnus would sacrifice himself and his Thousand Sons Legion to the Space Wolves, rather than becoming a pawn of chaos. He placed a psychic barrier around Prospero in order to stop his Legion from knowing of the upcoming doom. Death reigned from above at the Thousand Sons. The unprotected planet was reduced to burnt rock. Cities were destroyed, civilians massacred, and all the libraries were burned down. Magnus saw the devastation brought upon by his father, and his mind changed. He thought to himself that his actions didn't warrant such destruction, so he took to the battlefield. His psychic attacks decimated the Space Wolves until he came face to face with his brother Primarch Lehman Russ. Fist met fist until finally Magnus's fist collided with Russ's breastplate and knocked him off balance, but he quickly recovered and kicked Magnus's face, temporarily blinding him. Russ seized this opportunity, lifted Magnus into the air, and broke his back against his knee. In the moment of his greatest need, Zeech came to Magnus and offered to save not only his legion and himself, but also all the knowledge he had acquired throughout the years. Magnus pledged his life to chaos. Zeech then transported all the libraries to a demon world, along with the remaining Thousand Sons and Magnus. Magnus's body has also transformed into a new vessel, capable of harnessing the chaotic psychic powers he had been infused with. Magnus had become Zeech's first demon primarch. After Horus's defeat by the Emperor, the Thousand Sons returned to their demon planet of sorcerers. Zeech had returned their genetic flaw 
in their gene seed and many of the marines were becoming mindless chaos spawn. To stop these mutations, Magnus ordered Ahriman to gather strong psychic sorcerers to invoke a powerful spell to combat Zeech's mutations. This spell backfired, and although no thousand suns ever mutated into a chaos spawn again, they lost their bodies, their spirits became trapped in their armor. They could only die if their armor was destroyed. The strongest of psychers were not affected though. Instead, their psychic abilities became immensely amplified. Magnus vowed vengeance on Ariman and his sorcerers for what had been done to his legion, whether it was voluntary or not. Magnus, in a rage, assaulted the council of sorcerers, killing them until it was only the demon prince and Ariman left. Just as Magnus was going to deal the death blow, Zeech intervened. He needed Ariman yet still. Magnus exiled Ariman to search the galaxy for chaotic knowledge, letting him live. During the 32nd millennium, Magnus lured the space wolves into a trap in order to enact his vengeance against them. He would lure the wolves to a planet, but disappear into the warp as soon as the battle tipped into the wolves' favor. Magnus did this a few more times, each time choosing a planet farther and farther away from the space wolves' homeworld of Fenris. Herrick, the space wolves' great wolf, ordered a full-out attack on the planet of Gangova, the planet that he believed was the secret base of the Thousand Suns. Although Magnus had many of his legion there, they were a mere distraction. The bulk of the Space Wolves' legion made planetfall. Magnus' main force appeared in orbit around Fenris. Their homeworld was practically defenseless, and Magnus was out for blood. Although Magnus wanted his revenge on the wolves, his real motive was to prevent the Space Wolves from creating successor chapters and so was prepared to sacrifice what remained of his thousand sons. For forty days and forty nights, the wolves managed to hold off the chaotic forces. The space wolves had no choice but to awaken their most ancient of dreadnoughts, Bjorn the Fellhanded. Under his command, they managed to send a small force of marines to Gangova to bring back their main force. The great wolf Herrick quickly brought the might of his legions against the Thousand Suns. They pushed them out of the fortress monastery and finally Herrick confronted the demon prince Magnus in combat. The great wolf channeled his fury against Magnus, giving him the upper hand in the fight. Herrick pummeled the injured demon prince over and over again with his power fists. Magnus was pinned against the rocks of Fenris and Herrick's rage powered his fists. For a moment, it seemed like Magnus had lost the will to fight. He just took the barrage of pain, until he let out a cry of pain that had not been heard since Lehman Russ had mortally wounded his body back on Prospero a thousand years ago. With this cry, Magnus unleashed a psychic blast that threw back Herrick. He then assaulted Herrick's mind with foul chaotic might while he assaulted his body with blow after blow. Herrick knew the end was near, but found solace knowing that his space wolves had successfully defended their monastery and pushed back the Thousand Suns. Just as space wolf reinforcements arrived to save Herrick, Magnus delivered a death blow. The great wolf was dead, but Magnus knew his objective had been accomplished. His legion had infiltrated deep enough inside the monastery to destroy the birthing tubes, gene seed, and irreplaceable technology that could produce inheritors of Russ's legacy. With a smile, Magnus and the remaining Thousand Suns went back inside the warp. Although the gene laboratories were destroyed, the Space Wolves still had hope that their wolf priest Hraldir could replace and fix the damage done. Hraldir was found inside the gene laboratory in a pool of his own blood. He died protecting the future of the Space Wolves, but with his death, their future went along with him. With his death, the Space Wolves would forever remain alone. Magnus had attained his revenge, but he won't ever stop until every last wolf 
has met his demise. And with that bleak hopelessness, we end another lore on the 40k universe. Let me know what you thought about Magnus's lore. Was he a martyr for his cause? Did he really need to go and become chaotically infused? Let me know in the comments what you think about this Primarch. And also, let me know what you want to hear about next time. As always, I have been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, signing out.